COVID, Canada, and a convoy. It's all created quite a controversy and now a blockade at the border until all COVID-19 mandates and restrictions are lifted for truckers allowing their entry into the United States. ABC's Trevor Alt is on the ground in Ottawa where those protesters have been filling the streets with their bullhorns, their posters, and their banners. Trevor, you've seen it all. So now some of the Canadian provinces, right, are pulling back their restrictions amid these protests. What do you know? Well, Kira, I can tell you this is happening on a few different uh, in a few different provinces here in Canada. We know that Alberta now officially, as of today, has revoked their vaccine passport mandate. The same thing is going to be happening on Monday in Saskatchewan, and they're also looking at removing their indoor mask mandate too. And even over in Quebec, they have rolled out some plans here to basically repeal all of their COVID-19 restrictions and mandates by mid-March or so. So even though it's not happening right now, it is at least a plan. Now, according to officials in all of these provinces. These decisions are not the results of these demonstrations or protests. They insist it's because of the vaccines and because the vaccines are working and that this is just a, a, a sign that those uh, programs had run their purpose here and that the same way that many places in the U.S. are rolling back their restrictions, they are doing the same thing. But having heard about these changing restrictions, a lot of these protesters feel very emboldened, Kira. They feel like what they're doing is working and they're insisting that those few changes in a few provinces is not the goal. They want all of these mandates and restrictions in Canada to be gone for good, Kira. And we're talking about serious supply chain disruptions now, Trevor. A tremendous amount of goods and deliveries at stake here. What are the consumer consequences as we watch this? I think that that's something that's yet to be seen, and it's something that we know both the Canadian and the United States government are watching very closely, particularly with the shutdown of the Ambassador Bridge that's between Detroit and Windsor, Canada. That bridge alone, that uh, land change there in North America, is responsible for carrying 25% of the $600 billion in yearly trade between the United States and Canada. We're talking about an unbelievable amount of goods and an unbelievable amount of money here, Kira. And if that has shut down in, a lot, in both directions at times, it's been shut down a lot of times just a single direction is shut down that number one costs hundreds of millions of dollars a day and it also can have direct impacts on some of the factories and some of the workforces because a good chunk of what's brought across the border are auto parts and we've already heard of some auto part factories near the border that have basically reportedly had to shut down temporarily because they're not able to get those parts in and continue it could cause a spiraling ripple effect depending on what they're allowed to bring in and it can have some much more substantial consequences consequences than simply blocking off a street. And that's something that the governments are very aware of. It's something the protesters are aware of, too. They think that it might be some form of collateral damage, but they also know that it adds a, a heightened level of urgency that could help them actually get what they want, Kira. And Trevor, does there seem to be any end in sight? I think that's a, a, a tough question. I, if you ask these protesters, no, they don't necessarily think so. We keep hearing from uh, Ottawa police with maybe hints that some action might be coming. They just released a statement recently that said that these people were blocking others from accessing the property, which is technically a crime, and they could potentially be arrested with no warrant. But we still haven't seen really police take any action. In fact, all that we're hearing basically was about an interaction where police arrested someone because they brought in a lot of fuel. Obviously, these trucks can't continue running without those supplies coming in. But Everyone who is here and has remained here now for just about two weeks, Kira, is very steadfast in their resolve, and they have a lot of supplies. They are battening down the hatches, really. They say that they're in this for the long haul. The fact that we're starting to see some of these provinces roll back their policies could be a sign of maybe what's to come, but I think we're a really long way from Canada possibly announcing that all of their COVID-19 restrictions and mandates are lifted. In fact, I don't think that's a realistic possibility. There isn't an immediate end to this in sight. But at the same time, it does feel like, as you walk around here, like it could be the site, a, a, a bit of a tinderbox, and something, something big could happen at any moment. Okay, well, we'll stay on it with you and, and follow it. Trevor, thank you so much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.